Welcome into Growth Profits Live, the show that comes to you every single week with ways for you to have happier clients, better results, making more money, and enjoying the ride. Today, what we're going to talk about is this. Do you really want to cut expenses or do you want to increase income? We'll talk about it. Stay with us. Hi, folks. I'm Sean Crabtree. And I'm Cameron Bailey. We don't want to change the way you do business. We want to change the way you're thinking about your business. We want you to have better results, happier clients, and make more money. Let's get it started. Do you want to cut expenses or do you want to increase income? It's a really good question. Why are we talking about this today, Cameron Bailey? Man, today we're talking about, are you worried about your overhead? Are you looking at your profit and loss statement and looking down in the middle and say, man, where can I save fractions of a penny <laughs> to try to get rich? That's what I want to do. I want to save my way to get rich. Right? Yeah. And it ain't going to happen, bro. What are you focused on? Are you focused on cutting your expenses? Or are you focused on how we're going to get that top line of that profit uh, profit loss statement? And let me just tell you, big, and let me, fat, let me, let me, just let me big fat top line. Big, let me, gnarly top line. Let me tell line. you why we're talking about this, okay? Because we run into this all the time. Every day. We have clients who ask us, you know what? I need you to take a look at my profit and loss and help me figure out. Cameron's got the red solo cup. Red solo cup. So I'll drink you up. So we this have clients water. ask us all the time. You know, help me take take a look at my profit and loss and help me figure out where I can cut expenses. Our first question is just what I threw to you. Do you really want to cut expenses or do you want to increase income? Now, it's interesting because if we ask that question a hundred times, about a hundred times what we get is, well, at the end of the day, obviously, what I'm really looking to do is increase income <clears throat> and I'm thinking the best way to do that is to cut expenses. Okay. Well, that, well, here's what Let's I get all the time. That. They're like, duh, of course I want to increase income, but that sounds real good in in theory and in, in rainbow and butterfly land where we're just <laughs> making this stuff up, right? Rainbow and butterfly land. The That's, easiest way for me. Did you live on rainbow know, and butterfly man. land? The easiest, people people understand that the easiest, what they in their mind, what they're thinking is the easiest way for me to increase the revenue it's is to, to decrease the expense. Yeah. Right. And, and and let's talk about it. So, you know, in trying to make this as simple as possible, you know, just for a, a conversation, here's what we here's what we did. We said Ooh, can you can they see that? Okay. Yeah. So this is the Oh you can see through it. Look at that. It's like it's got holes in it. You can see through it? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. green screen. So this is the we consult the whiteboard. Let's pretend oh yeah, the green screen is coming through there. That's pretty freaky wow. So let's pretend that you are an average dental practice. An average dental practice in the U.S., we're going to call it $700,000. Now, if your goal is to cut expenses, let's talk about where you'd be looking at uh, at cutting expenses. So $700,000, you're talking about $700,000 in, in a year. Right. You're, you're, Gross you're, revenue. An average practice you know, in the U.S., our clients are doing much, much better than this, but an average practice in the U.S., is collecting around seven hundred thousand dollars in the course of a year. Now, if if that practice, if that dental practice were trying to cut expenses, okay, where would they go? Well, probably the least, you know, lab fees. You're not going to cut lab fees because well, most could, people are attached be, uh, to their lab. Might be usually a cheaper lab. Easiest, but normally let's let's say let's product. say you were going to cut supplies. Now, supplies should be about a seven percent. Uh, item in your overhead. So let's think about this now. You got a 7% line item in your overhead. Let's say that you went freaky wild. Freaky wild. Let's say that you freaky. said, Sean, I have found this unbelievable place online in, in China. In rainbow and butterfly land. <laughs> As Trump said, China. I, don't know. I found this place in China. And let's say that they are going to they are going to save me let's say a whopping 50%. Okay. So you got $700,000 I'm trying to do the math here stay with me. You got a $700,000 practice and let's say that that practice is trying to cut 
their overhead, which is supplies. No, you got to do times. Sorry. Times 0.5. Let's just say 0.5. Yeah, so we're going to say 50% with the Chinese. All right. You know who ain't going to say 50% with Chinese? This guy. Okay. I don't do business with China. So so let's say you're a seven hundred thousand dollars. Casey, you do business with China? No, I do. No, no. Seven hundred. If y'all go to Walmart, you're doing business with China. I'm just throwing it out there, Mr. Producer. Go. I don't go to Walmart. Seven hundred thousand dollar practice. Seven hundred thousand dollar practice. Average practice in the U.S. You're trying to cut expenses. What are you going to go? The easiest one everybody goes to is supplies. Supplies is a 7% line item. Let's say you went nuts and you cut that expense by a whopping 50%. You took a 7% line item and you cut that by 50%. You know how much money that's going to save you? Over the course of a month? Two grand. Two thousand bucks. And I can promise you this. You're not going to cut that fee by fifty percent. No, maybe let's 30, say, thirty would be more. Probably let's say reasonable. you cut it. Let, yeah, okay. Let's say you cut it by thirty. Okay, seven hundred thousand dollars. Thirty percent of that. Oh yeah, dude. So if you save thirty percent, so if if you're if you're looking at your profit and loss statement, you're looking at your supply bill, you're like, man, I can save thirty percent. Right. Going to China. <laughs> you gonna save what? How much a month? You just had it. How much a month is that? If you saving thirty percent, about twelve. You saving fourteen thousand bucks. Fourteen thousand dollars over the course of a year. That's twelve hundred dollars a month. Come on, man. You're spending energy, time, effort, worried about saving twelve hundred bucks a month. And you're running around doing all this freaky work, trying to figure out how to cut thirty percent. You're, de- you're spending all this energy and all this effort trying to figure out how in the world can I cut $1,200 a month. I mean, 14 and some change, $1,000 a year. How in the world can I do that? You know what? It's ridiculous. Change your focus, man. Throw it out the window. Get that out of here. Okay? Get that out of here. I'm not say, we're not trying to tell you not to be thrifty, okay? Be thrifty, but consuming yourself with trying to cut by 50% a 7% line item is not going to mean a tremendous amount of money to your net income. If you really, really want to grow your net income, remain thrifty, but don't consume yourself in trying to cut expenses. Yeah. Instead, increase your top line. Quit worrying about $1,200 a month. Start trying to increase your top line by $100,000 a month. Or two or three or $400,000. That's the biggest thing that I see, and especially not just in dentistry but in small business, is just because you're small business, that doesn't mean you have to think small. Think bigger. Like, don't allow yourself, oh, I can save $1,200 a month. I'm not worried about $1,200 a month. I'm focusing on how am I going to make another $15,000, $20,000, $30,000 a month. Exactly. We're not trying to say don't be thrifty with your expenditures, but we are trying to say quit wasting time. Here's the big takeaway. Don't waste your time on an enormous focus of cutting expenses. Take that energy and put it into creating income, and that's what's going to help your bottom line be successful. You know, we could talk about direct costs and indirect costs, uh, you know that every business has. You all have income. Or you all have expenses that are tied to the ability to deliver the service. But then you have fixed expenses that that, that are going to be there no matter what. Right. When you increase your top line, your revenue. When you increase your revenue. Those your, fixed yeah. expenses stay the same. That means that increase is all in profitability. That's how you grow your practice. The energy that we see people spend in trying to save $1,200 could be spent in trying to increase 100000 or like Cameron said, $200,000 a yeah. month. You know, what is it your granddaddy used to say? My granddaddy used to say, don't step over dollars to pick up pennies. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, and yet we see people doing that all the time. So when we come back, we're going to talk about three things, three areas that you need to focus on. If we've convinced you to stop worrying yourself over cutting expenses and start spending time increasing income. If we've convinced you that, there's three big chunks that we're gonna, we want to tell you about on how to do that 
when we come back. Stay with us. Yes, a 98% acceptance rate or better is possible. Yes, you can do it. And yes, it's not as difficult as you think. And I can show you how. I've created a course specifically to cover these topics. It's called the Dental Profits Academy. New patients, existing patients, dormant patients. Exactly what to do, what you're trying to accomplish, and how to do it, and what role everybody on your team plays. Intake calls, chair side, financial arrangements, reinstatement calls, it's all there, step by step. It's online and you can learn it at your leisure. Go to thecrabtreegroup.com and click course for more information. Welcome back. What we're talking about is this. Stop spending an enormous amount of time on cutting expenses. Start you want to manage, manage your overhead. But, but, but don't waste a bunch of time on trying to cut those small line item expenses. It's not going to get you there. And by the way, we've learned over the years that the things you can cut, we're talking about small line item expenses. You're not going to be able to carve out $15,000 a month you know, in your overhead, right? So quit wasting an enormous amount of time on cutting expenses and put all that energy and more into increasing your income. And that means top line. There's three things that we're going to tell you that you ought to do immediately to start working on your top line. What say you, Mr. Bailey? Man, if I'm going to focus on working on my top round, top line revenue, the first thing I got to do is I got to get, get my, my mind, mind right. right. Right? I got to know. I got to have my mind right. Right? If you remember what I said at the, at the beginning of the show, I said you're not going to be able to save your way to getting rich, to being profitable, to growing your business. You can't save your way to doing that. So my mind has got to be on growth. My mind's got to be on a direction. My mind's got to be clear about where I'm going. If I'm trying to go to a certain dollar amount, whether let's say $1.5 million or let's say $2 million. If I want to do, we are on the phone with the doctor today, wants to do what, $2.5 million? $2.5. So if my mindset is on that $2.5 million, then I am laser focused. There is no way. I'm not thinking about how hard it's going to be to get there. I'm, I'm not also thinking not about, thinking about cutting a 7% line right, item. Right. And I'm not consuming my team's time or my time on trying to shave a small amount off of something like right. that. $2.5 million dollars is on the grid. Yeah, if my $2.5 million is my, is, my, is my tangible goal, that's my tangible outcome, the bus is going to $2.5 million, period. That's it. That's my mindset. Never give up. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to get distracted. I'm going to $2.5 million. Step one, get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. And, and, and like Cameron says, I mean, all those things, you got to make it a focal point. But, but for this conversation especially, you got to quit worrying about trying to cut a 7% line item. Forget about all that. Take a look at it. You know what? In terms of suppliers, there's probably a 2 or 3 percentage point difference. It's not a big deal. Stay with somebody who you have a great relationship and put all your energy and, like Cameron said, all your focus. Get your mind right on focusing it on the growth. And then I can tell you this, regardless of what your business is, if you're watching us or listening to us right now and you're an entrepreneurial business, I can tell you right now, there are two areas that we can tell you without a doubt, and we don't know anything about your business. We don't even know your numbers. We don't even know the intricacies of your balance sheet, but I can tell you right now, over the last two and a half decades, here's what we've learned. There are two big, if you got your mind right, there's two other big things that you need to be focusing on. What's number two? Man, number two is, if I've got my mind right, and I know the direction I'm going, and I know what my overall number I'm trying to hit is, step two is, I have got to learn to sell. And we spend a lot of time talking about selling. You know what? We spend. As a matter of fact, if you're uh, listening producer, to this, if you're listening to this and you don't like the word sales, this ain't for you. Go ahead and hang up because yeah. your mind is not right. Your mind is not right. Step two is I got to. You're not learn. gonna be able to get a step two. No, you can't make step two you if unless you get pass past step, step one. one. Right. If my mind's not right, I'm never gonna learn to sell. I'm never gonna be able to push myself or 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 hold my hold, hold my team accountable yes. for learning the aspects that they need to learn to be great salespeople. If you do not adopt the mindset that selling is good, what are they? You stuck, man. You stuck. You want me to say something bad? Yeah. yeah you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't be dumb. Don't be an idiot. Learn man. to sell. Now, we spend a lot of time on this channel and all of our other channels in terms of in-depth on how to do that and where your focus needs to be. We're not going to go into that. Mr. Producer, could we put uh, what? We got the number one reason you suck at sales, the number two reason you suck at sales, and maybe a couple other videos. Could we refer to those in the... Where, yep. Will we do that right here where my finger's pointing, or will we put that in the... We can do it up and down in the description. Oh, we're just doing this. He's going to swipe it through. Okay, cool. So we'll put links to those videos in here. But number one thing, if, if you know, what we're talking about here is this. Don't spend time cutting your expenses. Spend time creating income. There's three things you need to do. Number one, you got to get your mind right Quit worrying about those expenses. Put all your effort and all your, all your energy on moving toward that goal that you're trying to get to. Number two, like Cameron said, you got to learn to sell. And you put all that energy into believing, convincing right. yourself that selling is a good thing. Go seek out references, right, that are convincing you that selling is a good thing. There's thousands of books challenge, out there. Challenge the people on your team. Go to, to our website at thecrabtreegroup.com and click on good stuff. And there's a bunch of good books right there. Robert Caldini, um, Jeffrey Gittimer. There's all kinds of good. Selling, you got to learn to sell, which means to be able to learn to sell, you have got to embrace the concept. So number one, get your mind right. Number two, learn to sell. What's number three? Number three, you got to know how to talk dinero. You got to know how to talk about the paper, about the finances. The paper. Right. If we're going to talk about money, talking about money can't be a problem if I'm trying to get the money. <laughs> Step one, I got my mind right. Step two, now I have learned to sell, Sean. I've learned to sell. Step three, I got to learn to talk about money. I can't be scared of money. Can't be scared to talk about money. I can't have any limiting beliefs about money. Money is what is going to allow me to get to where I want to go. I got to be excited about to talk about money. And you know what? It all goes back to number one. You got to get your mind right. Or you when could say, comes, talk like, about finances. Well, when, when, when cameras talk, I mean, it, you know, the bottom line is, like he's saying, you got to get past limiting beliefs about money. You got to get comfortable in how to present it. Now, obviously, we can help you in the presentation, the orchestration of the presentation of the finances. The verbiage, the, and the, the, verbiage, help. the verbiage you use does not matter no. if you, number one, are it, scared it, it, to death to talk about money. That's right. It's going to come across. That's right. So whatever you need to do to get comfortable about talking about money is something that you've got to do in your own head. Take somebody to lunch, call us, read something, Google something, whatever you got to do. Now, the verbiage can help you feel more comfortable, okay? There's no doubt about that. But it's not going to mask your mindset, uh, a, your mindset right? right? It's not going to cover up and totally cover up your mindset. When we're talking about presenting finances, right, You've got to be comfortable enough in your head that number one, what it is that you're the service that you're providing, no matter what entrepreneurial business you're in, the service that you're providing is worth way more than what you're charging. And you got to get comfortable with things like that. And again, the orchestration can help, but it's not going to mask that if that's not what you believe in your head. You got to get clear on that. What we're talking about is quit spending time cutting expenses and start spending time creating income there's three things you got to do number one you got to get your mind right you got to get clear that time wasted on cutting expenses is time that could be spent on cre generating income number two no matter what business you're in you got to hear this you got to learn to sell you got to be able to sell it you got to learn to sell it and number three you got to learn how to properly orchestrate a financial arrangement. You've got to be comfortable in the orchestration of a financial arrangement. It doesn't matter if you're selling fences, if you are a commercial contractor, it doesn't matter if you're a CPA or an attorney, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're, you're selling houses, if you're, you're selling, selling houses, houses, yeah. You got to be comfortable talking about the money. For me, the number one thing is realizing that what you do is worth way more than what you're charging. And if you're not clear about that in your own head, you got to start right there. You Dive into it. that. I'm worth it. Dive into that. And look, if, if what you're doing is not worth way more than what you're charging, you then add else. some more things to it. <laughs>
You know, add some more things that you're creating value to it so that you're clear in your head that the value that you're bringing to the table is way, way, way more valuable than what it is Mr. That Producer, you're you know what people, people ask me all the time? What do we charge? You know what I tell them? A lot. A bunch. <laughs> it's very, very expensive. Very, very. I'm not going to lie to you. It's very, very expensive. Right. <laughs> But and, I believe and, in and it's I know worth what it's, five times that. And, and, and we know that because we have clients who out collect five times what, what we charge them. Sure. So we're very comfortable in yeah. what it is. And you have that to, and you have and to, you've got to be the same way. And in your business, you have to have those references. You have to have those, um, those big wins so that you can go there in your mind. Like if you're a dentist and you're listening to this and you've got maybe a limiting belief about money, or maybe you're even a, uh, an administration person in a dental practice and you have a limited belief about money think about that time where you did that case that changed that person's life and the dollars that you collected for changing that That's person's life i mean what's what is the price tag on that people buy exactly what they want we justify it based on price and you're delivering what people want but you got to believe in your product you got to believe in your service you got to believe in everything that you're doing or it will show this is something again that we see all the time, and you see it on social media. You know, you know. Hey, does anybody have any ideas? Somebody will throw a post out there. Who's got some ideas about how I can cut expenses? Listen, right. ask oh, a better yeah. question. Do you really want to cut expenses, or do you want to increase income? And if you want to increase income, you're not going to be able to do that by cutting expenses. If you really want to increase your income, forget about the expenses and put all of your energy into increasing your revenue so that it translates into bottom line income and the three ways to do that is number one get your mind right and we've get talked right. about that number two learn to sell reach out to us we've got all sorts of opportunities to be able to help you with that we've got free videos all over social media go to our youtube page at where is it what is it called? Crabtree Group. At Crabtree Group. We got a whole bunch of things all about value and influence you and all of that. You can go to go to thecrabtreegroup.com. Yep. Contact us there. Contact us there. And Mr. Producer is going to put some link to some of those videos. And then so number one, get your mind right. Number two, learn to sell. Number three, learn to present and be comfortable in the presentation of the finances. And again, it doesn't matter what your business is. If you're listening to that, those three things are going to put you in a position to have happier clients, better results. What else is it, Mr. Producer? <sighs> you skipped the most important one. We're going to make more money. Clients, better results, make more money, and enjoy the ride. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We'll see you this time next week on Growth Profits. Have a good week. Thank you.